How's it going, Phil? Uh, so we are re-reporting this because we had a fail with uh, doing like a FaceTime and I ran through one of your properties earlier and mm -hmm. I have one of the screenshots here. This is okay. this is one of your properties there. Yeah. So um, now that one is in Waterford and I, uh, you know, so it's always interesting to see um, it's a lot harder to find properties in the Metro Detroit area in the suburbs. So, yeah. you know, it, 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 it's really interesting. So one thing that, you know, kind of wanted to just kind of run through here a little bit and, and hopefully we won't take too much of your time. And I appreciate you going through this a second time, actually. Right, it's <laughs> so, better, better the second time, right? Back to exactly. So how did you find this lead? And I uh, like, can you run through any other numbers? Whatever you feel comfortable with is good. Yeah, yeah. So this one was a, uh, a PPC lead. Uh, it, it came in, and um, so we got a pretty sizable PPC budget that we spend every month, and uh, we get different leads, right? So this is what we call intent-based traffic. So people that's looking for yep. you, raising their hand, hey, pick me. And that's what we did. We picked this person and we were able to help them uh, with this, uh, you know, help, help buy their property. So uh, so that's how we come about it. Generally, when we get a, a certain we, like lead temperature, right? We look at hotter leads and try to touch base with them as soon as possible, just because there's somebody who's essentially asking for you to help. So, hey, you know, if this, our job is to help, then we want to get to them first. Exactly. So uh, first off, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, awesome. It's a new mic, so I just need to make sure. <laughs> Don't yeah. want to go through the second problem again. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, yeah, so you get these leads in here. And, yeah, like I said, those PPC leads, or like you said, the PPC leads are speed to lead, basically, because you're, you're not the only one they're, they're, they're typing in and, and putting their information in. So, yeah, it's a, the first one to get it gets the lead. And then, I'm sure that there's probably shopping around a little bit here and there. How do you deter that a little bit, I guess, um, when you contact them? So, Good question. Yeah. So Lee comes in and you're asking like, what do we do about them talking to other people or having? Yeah, so like uh, from them shopping your offer to other people. Oh, good question. So one, well, first thing, like you said, speed to lead, right? So we, we yeah. contact them first. Usually if you didn't contact them fast enough, usually within the last, the first, like really the first five minutes, but sooner is better, then they're not gonna have time to go do, 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 and this all, do a bunch of forms, right? So that's right. one, that's a preventative way. Now, let's say you don't do that, and you know, we actually don't know. Sometimes they fill out four or five, you know, and I mean, hell, sometimes we're the only ones that call them back, but point is if they got these different people and you said how do we prevent them from shopping the offer i mean it's a combination of things that's like a long-winded question but the first thing is look we, we're building report rapport with people mm -hmm. and, and real report because we're truly trying to understand the whole building report i hear people say that and it's like a you know it's like a sales thing oh you gotta build yeah rapport. i'm talking about building real rapport so that way they feel comfortable opening up to you with what they actually want out of it. It's amazing that you have to do it that way, but they tell you what they want. So that way we can spin our gears and our, use our expertise to just say, oh, this is what they actually want. Yep. Here's, let's get loud, let's let's help them get to this point. So again, just building that rapport. Uh, secondly, well, even maybe I should have said this first, but beginning with the problem solving mindset and truly trying to mm -hmm. serve somebody, we're not trying to force anyone into a particular box right round peg into a square hole we want to like we okay we have a certain business model and that's okay but we want to understand what is that what does winning look like for them first and then we work backwards to see how we can make that happen now as far as the others being involved i mean that's just a part of it they you know offer from this person offer from that person mm -hmm. that's fine we don't have a problem with it um but at the end of the day we do want to make sure that we're not like wasting our time too because some people Unfortunately, we'll just do that. And that's all they want is to just kind of waste your time. So um, like generally what we'll do, we will just have them call us back last. Hey, you know, I'm just shopping offers, trying to see what I can get, et cetera. So we'll get information we can get. And then we just say, just give us a call back last after you have all your offers. And then just let us know what your price is. 
right? Right, right. Which, if you think about it, that works best for them, right? Mm -hmm. If you contact, you want to get 10 offers, you want to get three offers, you want to get 100 offers, do that. And once you have it, okay, now you know everything looks like, you just tell us a number. The worst thing's going to happen is we're going to say, no, we can't do it. And best thing happened, okay, it takes you an extra 30 seconds to one minute and now you make more money on the property than you otherwise would have. So again, this is what's in your best interest. So we're not really doing anything to deter them. Um, now there are some not fly by night type, um, I shouldn't say fly by night, I should say there's newbie investors all the time, you know, the latest convention or whatever comes into town. And we see it every time. As soon as they come yeah. in, all of a sudden we start getting a bunch of people reaching out and a lot of people who just don't have a clue what they're doing and when i say don't have a clue i don't mean that in a negative way like mm -hmm. oh you don't have a clue it's just you just you literally just don't know right right well when you don't want to but as from a homeowner's perspective or a home like someone who's looking to sell their home you don't want to be selling your home while someone else is learning on your dime type of thing right yeah. so i mean other than that uh i mean that's pretty much how we address it we talk to people we get to the truth of the matter and we literally try to serve them. We try to improve ourselves to the point where we can serve them in multiple ways so that way they can be successful. Yeah. Yeah. So that's exactly kind of where it comes down to. And you, you kind of said this earlier, um, you know, when you were, when you're a, a you called it a one trip pony and all you do is home, oh, yeah. wholesale and that's it. I, uh, you know, that, leaves you into this narrow mindset and you're actually doing them a disservice versus now you know a lot of these other strategies and you can tailor the strategy to what they need and truly solving their problem whether that be need with you whether that's with you or without you mm -hmm. um you still uh, at least know about all these other situations uh, like when I when I talk to a seller and, and they want retail price and I ask them about subject two, I ask them about land contract or about terms, things like that. No, 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 we just need we need cash, you know, or you know, just to just to sell it. Okay, great. Sounds like I'm not a good fit, but let me connect you with a realtor that I know and trust. Yeah. You know, yeah. now that I spent all this time building rapport, they trust at least what I say mm -hmm. and I can connect them with somebody that I trust on the, on the realtor side. 100%. Just seeing how you can, the value add piece, just understanding, and I talked about this a little bit on, on the live with Dean, is just understanding how money works in the true value exchange. A lot of times yeah. people focus on money, 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 money really the re that's a natural result of focusing on adding the most value and being open to receiving an equal value in exchange so going mm -hmm. back to what i said earlier about or i guess on the one that didn't record as far as the one trick pony <laughs> when you're the <laughs> yeah when you're the one trick pony like again you are literally if this is your profession and that's what you're doing you're out here mm -hmm. to help people and you're a one trick pony you're doing a disservice to those that you serve because you're only able to serve them in one way now they got to go find yeah. somebody else and maybe that somebody else is well qualified maybe they're not right maybe after you can't help them they just throw their hands up and oh forget it it's not gonna work right but you're doing yourself a disservice so it's your responsibility one to be a problem solver mm -hmm. overcome obstacles but two to also be able to improve yourself your ability your quote-unquote value so that way you're able to bring more value and at the end of the day you're able to get an exchange for that additional value that you're bringing right so again if you're just a wholesaler and all you can do is make cash offers well when somebody needs something outside of that you're out of the game so that hurts you it's a lose-lose yeah. situation as opposed to the win-win you lose because now you can't help the person they lose because you can't help them either so you don't make the money they don't get the benefit and everything else right but when you improve oh, yeah. yourself you get okay and say oh yeah we can you know we can list your property right or we got this special or this creative option that works for you that solves all your problems perfectly right when you're able to do that then everything works out well because again you're bringing more value uh yeah. to the table and you uh like i said you get an exchange of that value in return so that's really what it's about and if you focus on that money is a byproduct of the value that you add it just happens yeah. Right? As opposed to let me get you the lowest price possible. <laughs> and I don't care what the situation is. The house is in excellent condition. You got all the time in the world to sell, but I'm still going to give you a 50 cents on the dollar offer. 
Yep. No, that's not, that's not how that's supposed to go. No, 100%. And that's the thing, even as a wholesaler, um, you still have to understand your different strategies as well. You got to understand the Airbnb method, the, the buy and hold method, the fix and flip method. Not everything is just fix and flip, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where, uh, you know, networking, getting to know people, surrounding yourself with these people so that these other buyers and actually getting to know your buyer, figuring out what their buy box is, makes you a better wholesaler or me and, and but whoever's doing this, a better wholesaler, um, as well as now you can, as you do that and you see your buyers doing this and well, maybe eventually I want to take one down myself and, and kind of do those same methods and, and like, you know, dip my toe in and, you know, I always think an investor should be a wholesaler first, you know, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so they know how to find the deals. But either way. I'll, I just, I'll add to that, that thought process. I'll just use a different, um, I'll describe it a different way. I yeah. think every investor should be a, a marketer first, right? Because that's all yeah. wholesaling is, right? You know, sales, yeah. you know, marketing, then you can find deals because everybody's always out here looking for deals. This, that, and the third, how do I find deals? Let me call it to a wholesaler. I can't find any deals. Let me talk to a realtor and different things like that. I remember when we first started buying properties, we were just doing wholesale for so long. And then a few years ago, we just like, all right, we're gonna start buying these properties. Mm -hmm. it, it was literally just a click of a button. It was like, okay, we're just not gonna wholesale, so we're gonna buy it, right? And it's all right. about how we're gonna buy it. But the point is, when you, understand, when you have that funnel in place, and you understand that you've had that built, now you get to reap the re or rewards from that as well. You could just use it to buy your own properties and nothing else if you want. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, um, and back back to this deal that you had. Um, the good thing about this property, we showed you a picture in the, in the beginning, but it's also right on that lake. Let me so see. that that is awesome. That's right from the back, you know, right oh, yeah. from the back deck there. So that is. Pure waterfront property will make a great Airbnb. I believe that's what you said you were going to do with it, right? Okay, I guess we have it in this one, but yeah, this one we're going to do a short term. Uh, yeah. So it's honestly, it's a, you know, something like that. You're getting to know the properties, you're getting to know the areas, getting to see, you know, what things are going for, you know, and be like, hey, well, if I can get it cheap enough, I might as well just put the money into it myself and, and make an even bigger return, you know? yeah so yeah um but how did you how did you when you found this property how did you come up with the strategy like what strategy you use did you just play like, uh whether you were going to wholesale it or whether you were going to do the airbnb oh good question so so how do we decide that i mean it goes through an underwriting process where we determine so here's the thing it's always best to have multiple exit strategies and sometimes mm -hmm. So here's what, what I talked about. We're problem solvers first. We want to understand mm -hmm. the situation, all right? We want to have enough value that we can understand all these different exit strategies so that way we can bring the right solution to the seller. Generally speaking, when you address those two things, the deal will tell you what type of deal it is, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have, you don't have to, necessarily have to decide. When you understand those two pieces of information and you underwrite the deal, it'll tell you. Like, okay, based off this, that, and the other, if you buy for this amount, okay, is it, for example, if a property is a half a million dollars, let's say it's, or let's say we're getting it for half a million dollars, right? And it's worth, when it's all fixed up, let's say 700,000, right? And we know it needs probably 50K in work and we're able to work things out with the seller and we, we pick the property up for half a million. Well, that deal will, you know, kind of, tell you what it needs okay it's okay it's a seven hundred thousand dollar property probably not gonna be a good rental okay so you kind of you know check that box maybe it could be a short-term rental that's depending that's very deal specific but it could be right if it's in the right area and you're the type of buyer you want to do that that could be it yep. but most likely it's probably just a flip it's probably just a flip now sometimes when you cover those two first criteria solving the seller's problem and again mm -hmm. understanding all different avenues that are available when you when you combine when you can have those things uh when you combine those things uh sometimes you do have multiple exit strategies right when you got the property you say hey i can rent this out long term i can put this in airbnb i can flip mm -hmm. this property 
I could I could turn into a halfway house, all this other stuff, right? You know, when that starts happening, then it's just safer for you because you got so many different things that you can do with the property. At that point, yeah. it just goes back to your goal, right? Because right. some of these properties we purchased when we were just looking at accumulating cash, right? It, it was mm -hmm. just, all right, well, let's just do the option that's good. Excuse me, that's going to make us the most cash, right? right? That's one. And then sometimes when you don't have money, you just like, I got to wholesale this deal and all those stuff. Maybe looking at the option that's just going to make us, maybe not the most cash, but get us the most cash quickly, mm -hmm. right? Relatively speaking. Or maybe your goal is cash flow. Now, I really don't care how much cash I can make right now. That's good. That's additional equity we can have. But oh, I can make X amount of cash flow per month. And that's what I'm looking at. So it's really good. Now at that point, you get to decide based on what you want. But you serve first, right? Serve and solve problems mm -hmm. first. And then after you underwrite the deal, you can look. Now you're, you can be selfish, right? Say, oh, what works best for me? What works best for the company? You know what I mean? But but in that order, right? Yeah. yeah. A lot of people do it in the reverse. They go into the deal. What's going to be best for me? And they start there. And where, let the other chips fall where they may. Okay. So you're you're basically having the deal, whatever the deal is going to tell you the exit strategy. It'll tell you what options are available to be the and it's and sometimes it's not a better or it's not a this option better than that one. Sometimes you got options that are just different. Okay, yeah. here's the option, here's the pros and cons of that. Here's another option that's equally as good, and here are the pros and cons of that. Which one do you want? And that's where right. your preferences come in. Oh, I want cash right now. Why well, I want cash flow right now. Right. Yep. That's when those come in. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, and kind of with that, it's uh, you know, I mean, that house, it's a really nice house. The only downfall on that house is it's on a busy road. You mm -hmm. know, uh Pine was it yeah, Pontiac Lake Road. So mm -hmm. um and then but the good thing is, is we got nice trees that's covered covers up the house and you know keeps the, the road noise away and things like that so um that and it's not like it's in the middle of the lake where the lake is you're, you're getting a bu bunch of people bustle around it looks like it's like a canal coming in and it basically leads out to the lake mm -hmm. so you got lake access without the trouble of a bunch of partiers you know yeah that's true yeah 100 yeah. percent I mean, as far as the roadway, I mean, again, you just take that into account as the valuation. Because yep. some of that stuff, when you start looking at that, depending on how you underwrite the deal, it can be um, more, more of a, it can be a bigger deal in some cases or not a mm -hmm. bigger deal. So for example, generally, <coughs> excuse me, generally speaking, when you're renting a property out, let's say just normal, long term, this was on like, I think it's just, a, it's not a double yellow lane road, but it's just, you know, right. it's a busy road. But the uh, point is, if it was a double yellow lane road, you don't want to, you know, most renters don't want to live on that. So it's going to be harder to rent. So that's something that yeah. you want to make sure that you consider in, in the underwriting process, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's not exactly, I mean, obviously that's not the case in this one, but, uh, you know, this, you know, you take it and then you just account for the, that and the pricing or what you come up with for ARVs and et cetera. Yeah. And the good thing is, is that you also take that, your exit strategy in account as well, because there's a difference between a short-term rental and a long-term rental. Short-term rental, they don't really care too much. Yeah. Versus, oh, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. Uh, versus a long-term rental, they got family, they got kids, they want to play outside, they want to be away, you know, they want to make sure that they're safe, so on and so forth. Yeah. You know? So um, it's a lot different. Uh, it, just, it also depends on your exit strategy and on that. Now, um, one thing that we do um you know one thing that you were bringing up before was uh you know your team and you know the people that you you bring in to kind of bring in the properties and then your your process so uh you know like you want to kind of just describe a little bit about about that with this property and kind of how the flow went you mean from the time that we came in from the time we came in to close them basically yeah, so we got it where, you know, they called in from the PBC lead that that went to a um, acquisitions person uh, and then just kind of lead, lead it from there. Oh, yeah. So anyway, it comes in for marketing based off the temperature. Uh, someone will reach out to it. In this particular case, it was a closer. 
or acquisitions rep, they speak to them. They did the things that we just talked about, understanding the problem and how we can solve that problem and how we can apply what we know to help them solve their problem and get them what they want, effectively creating a win-win. Mm -hmm. So after understanding them and then basically relaying it back to them that we understand and that we can solve, we got the property of the contract. This particular case, there was someone who was, uh, it was an older gentleman. He's out of like Texas. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, actually, I want to say it was his daughter that was helping. But basically, it was a family situation where I don't know if they disowned the son or if the son disowned them or whatever happened. Like yeah. that exactly. But uh, they hadn't talked to me in like five years. But basically, what it came down to from their perspective, he basically, um, maybe there was an agreement. Maybe there was no agreement. But it sounded like there was an agreement in place where he should be like paying for the house. His dad basically gave him the house or at least allowed him to stay there under the pretense that he was going to pay all the bills and stuff like that. And essentially that's not what he was doing, right? So he basically stayed up like burden on the dad. He didn't like it. Some of them had some, a lot of other stuff going on as well. And they didn't like each other, right? And at the end of the day, we were able to, okay, understand that. And we didn't even know what the condition of the property was. Was it good, bad, livable, what did they do? He was effectively mm -hmm. squattering the house. And um, uh, anyway, we were able to help with that. Because a lot of times I find that in those situations where you got one party saying something, and another party saying something else, and both of them saying that the other person is the bad guy or the evil person yeah. and all that other stuff. Not all the time, but a lot of times, more often than not, we find that it's neither one of them are actually that bad of people. It's more so just the perspectives that they have, and they don't agree. Mm -hmm. So we're able to come in, be mediators, and help both of them get to the agreement uh, that they solve. So in this particular case, I mean, as far as the way the transaction works, it's, it's the same as any other deal. Deal came in, we talked to the people, marketed mm -hmm. me a uh, real report with them to understand what's going on. We make them an offer. Well, actually, we actually, we always ask them what they want for the property first, right? We yeah. start with that. Yeah, yeah. And uh, basically, we can come up with something that works. We do that. And after that, it goes into like transactions. And in this case, it didn't have to go through Dispo, but, uh, you know, we get out of the queue. Uh, we it took us a minute to figure out like the access to the property and stuff because of the situation, but other than that, we you know pretty straightforward. Awesome. Now, if you were getting rid of this property, then it would go through dispo. And um, how do you typically handle that type of situation um, with dispo? Do you do it like in an assignment, or do you guys buy it and then well maybe either wholesale it or double close or or whatever? If we were wholesaling it, is that what you're asking? Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah, if we were wholesaling it, then at that point it would go through a, 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 a process where we get, you know, condition we get the pictures and video of the property. So that way our uh, partner investors can can see what we have available and know what they're getting before they actually go to the property and waste time. Mm -hmm. We get offers. The offers come in. Based off the offers that we receive, um, I mean, basically, you have to resubmit an offer before you go to the property. That's basically. Oh, okay. Right. Uh, because yeah. it, it's a way, it's a it's respect thing, right? Why would I, yeah. if you, uh, you know, Randy, hey, you call, hey, I'm interested in this property, and I send you out to the property, and you go to it, and you say, hey, I'm going to be at like 20K on this property, and we got it locked up for 50, and we're selling it for 80, we just wasted everybody's time, right? Yeah. So, we just, yeah. so yeah, we're giving you video and photos, and it's not, we're not in the photos and video. We don't try to hide anything, right? Because we want the yeah. buyer. He, you know, we want them to win as well. It's win, wins, wins all the way around. So we give you here's everything, right? Here's everything we know. Yep. Make and we don't. So here's the thing: make an offer, and it's not an offer like, oh, if I make this offer, you guys are gonna hold me to it, and I'm locked in. And no, we're not gonna say anything bad or feel any way about you if you change your offer. We're just looking for mm -hmm. a bar part based off what you see. What, what do you think is a fair price for this property? You make an offer. Now, based on what you see, that offer is completely not in the ballpark. We're going to tell you, just don't waste your time. Not in a bad way, like, but legit, just don't waste your time because there's no way we're going right. to accept that, right? So right. let's just not even talk about it. Uh, but at least we have that in place. And now you can go out there, look at the property and confirm what it is that, you know, that you need to see, whether your offer changes up or down. Sometimes that happens. And then mm -hmm. from there, we select an offer and look to go to close. That's awesome. So, and with that, the buyer or the seller doesn't usually know that you're wholesaling it, right? Uh, not per se. Sometimes they do. 
Uh, sometimes okay. it's not really a it's not really a big deal because again, what we're doing is focusing on what is the end goal, right? Yeah. What does the yeah. want to have happen, right? So I would say usually it's something that doesn't come up because it just doesn't matter, right? If the, the yeah. if, if someone says, "Hey, I want my property sold," and we say, "Okay, look." You know, and it's all in the agreement. So when we go over yeah. our agreements with them, it mm -hmm. literally like we really tell them, like, hey, look, you know, some of these properties we buy, some of we work with our partner investors, right? At the end of the day, it don't matter. You want to sell it for this price, we want to buy it for this price, and that's just what, you know. So usually it doesn't even come up, right? The only time that I've ever really seen it come up is when there starts to be an issue and you're not doing mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do or you're not communicating correctly or something like that. But generally, it's not that. So your question was, do they know if it's being wholesale? They may, they may not know, uh, but generally it's one of those things that don't come up, right? If you go to a doctor yeah. with a, a shoulder injury or something like that, they'll tell you, generally speaking, oh, okay, they, after they found out where the pain is and everything mm -hmm. else, and they understand what the source of it is, they generally prescribe you what they think is going to happen. If it's a surgery, they're going to say, okay, we're going to do this surgery on this part of the body. And at the end of the day, you're, you know, your shoulder going to be, you know, you're going to have this much healing time and shoulder's going to be back up and running, right? They don't yep. go through every detail. Well, we're going to do this. And if we do this little thing here, this little thing, all this little other jargon that is literally Chinese to you and you don't speak Chinese, right? So right. the point is, they don't, they don't do that. Here's what's going to happen. And all you care about is the end result. So it's the same thing applies here. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what the end result is going to be. Here's how we're going to communicate what's happening in that process. That's it. Yeah. And, and that's where it comes down to is just the biggest thing is communication with them. And, you know, um, I tell them, hey, you know, we have different exit strategies. We may not know exactly what strategies we go with right off the bat. So some we work with our partners, some we take down ourselves, you know, th things of that nature. Um, but I, I go, I let them know whatever we agree upon is exactly what you're going to get. So, you know, yep. so it don't matter. It's um, all about the communication, 100% exactly. about the communication. Exactly. Because even, even when, like, like I said, it, it, like I said, it's just, it's about just how you, how you communicate to it. Right. And I'll say this, most importantly, we, it, it doesn't come up because it's just, it's like all, in, in certain cases, it's mm -hmm. inviting unnecessary, it's just causing undue stress. It's inviting yes. unnecessary problems, right? You're trying to explain to somebody how to do, let's say algebra, but they need to first learn what numbers are and what the addition and uh, uh, multiplication sign mean. Yep. So you could say, so if the goal, if the point is to teach them how to do it, then okay, that makes sense. But if the awesome. goal is, hey, I just want to get the right answer. Okay, the right answer mm -hmm. is this. Right. One is very simple. You can just do it. The other way, well, you got to take this and you do that, and then we're going to do this thing, and that's how we worked out. Is invites questions of, well, wait, what is this, and how is that? And it literally doesn't matter because you don't really know what you don't know. At the end of the day, I just want to know that it works. I'm not a car mechanic. I'm giving them, I'm, I'm giving I'm giving multiple um, uh, uh, analogies here on, on purpose, right? I'm not a car mechanic. Yep. A lot of times, what's going on up under the hood? I'm a mechanical engineer, so I, I probably know more than the average person, but you know, let's say I didn't know that. I'm not a car mechanic. I don't know how to fix cars. When I pull up to a shop, okay, here's the problem. I want it fixed. They yep. tell me, okay, here's what I'm gonna do this, that, and the other, and it'll be fixed. Okay, I don't ask them the how and okay, when you pull this part and that part and this little you know thing of a jig over here, I don't actually want to know that. And if you start to talk to me that way, I am going to I'm mean, like, okay, in my mind, I start doing like this. Come on, come on, get to the point, right? Yeah. That's, but that's, you know, neither here nor there. But the point is that that's same thing applies here, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, a lot of times people don't care enough to know. And as long as you're going to give them what, again, assuming that you're doing what you say you're going to do as well, right? When yeah. Questions start coming up when you start doing things you shouldn't do or you start mm -hmm. messing around. Yeah, 100%. I, I agree with you on that. Um, you know, so one thing I wanted to, you know, kind of bring on this, uh, and then we'll bring up the last topic is, uh, congratulations on that Waterford property. It's it's a beautiful property. It needs some clean out. And like I was saying before, when you find a property that needs a clean out, needs needs things here, I look at that and I just say, cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. <laughs> so you know, hell, you know, now we're still here to help people. 
um, as much as possible, but those are things that cost money. Those are things that homeowners, regular homeowners do not want to deal with. Yep. When you can get rid of somebody's headache, okay, you know, if they were to put that up on the market right now, on the, they would have to do uh, probably about 20 grand worth of renovations, if not 30, 30 to 40 mm -hmm. grand, you know, just to get it sold. Um, yeah. You know, so we offer speed convenience and, you know, and so that they can just get out of a situation. Yep. And look, here's the thing. Now, to some that may sound bad when you don't understand the language of money. Like, oh, I see this and I just see ching, ching, ching. Like some people may not like that or they think that. But mm -hmm. really, let's break that down. What's really being said? All you're saying is if I walk into a house and I see it needs a lot of repairs, and I see this house is full of stuff and it's junky and messy. What do I mean to change to change? All I see, if I break down what you, I think you're actually seeing, and I think yeah. I'm right, is I see things that I can solve for cheaper than what is worth to the seller and everyone else, right? Yeah. I'm just a real simple example. So let's say a house is need clean up. Mm -hmm. I'm just real simple numbers. Let's say you can get that house cleaned out for hundred bucks, right? That's not a real number, right? But let's say a thousand bucks. And that's probably still not real. But let's say you can get it cleaned out for a thousand bucks. But to that homeowner, that was a big deal. I don't have any people there. I'm not in state. I don't even know who to call. They're going to charge me retail pricing to get this stuff done. I don't even want to deal with all of this stuff. That's three, four, five thousand dollars that they got to deal with. It. Plus the headache of having to actually get it done. And then what we're going to do, and okay, I got to get somebody to check, like just the headache piece, right? Yes. Okay, it's, 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 I'm adding more value to you than what it cost me to fix it. Mm -hmm. Cha okay, that's what service is. We're, we're, we're capitalism, right? Yep. But I'm, and again, because, you know, we get it. People need, you're not doing this for free. You want to do this to, to provide for your family. And as long as you're doing it with the intent to serve others in a valuable way, there's no problem with that, right? So that's what I hear. That's what I hear when I hear you say that, right? It's not a not a, not a big deal. I'm able to provide right. me to add. This is more valuable to them than it costs me. Same thing. This is why a, a plumber a plumber fixed the house, a, a fixed your plumbing. This is why a mechanic fixed your car. It costs mm -hmm. them less because of what they know to do it than what you value. It would take me a significant amount of time to figure out how to change an engine in a car or all this other yep. stuff where I could just pay somebody to do it. So it's cheaper for me to just pay them to do it off their expertise. And it's one hundred percent. Anyway, I digress a little. <laughs> yeah, if you if you don't have the right tools for the job or the right knowledge, you know they both go hand in hand. You can have the right knowledge and just not the right tools. It takes you still twice as long yep. than it would would be. So it, it really, you know, as investors, we have the tools and we have the means and the know how to be able to get these things done for a little bit significantly cheaper. Yep. You know, so we can get rid of these homeowners' headaches um and and go from there now so the last topic i want to bring up was um this event that dean has been putting on on uh march 8th so hopefully you see this before march 8th and you go to it it's march 8th in white lake tickets are only 25 dollars okay 25 dollars to see this man called named bill allen and i let phil tell you a little bit about Bill Allen. All right, so the short answer is Bill Allen is one of my mentors. I look up to him. He's been doing a lot of different things. He's in real estate. He got his hands in multiple businesses. He's somebody that you probably really should know, but he just hasn't done a lot with his social media. He just started to really run it up and he's really still impacted a bunch of lives, right? He has a mastermind where literally the top companies across the nation, as far as investing in real estate, like they're in his in his group, right? This is how we learn and stay on top of stuff. This is how we are able to um, work together, build networks and things. And he's out of it, right? He's in the yep. owner's box as far as his company is concerned, right? So he don't do anything. Got a COO, so I'm like, hey, what's happened over there? This thing he manages from a dashboard, everything's good. So he's doing this thing there. Like I said, multiple other businesses. Um, I mean, you talked about $25. So again, going back to what I said earlier, just value, right? Mm -hmm. $25 can be a lot. $25 may not be a lot. If I say I got a pen, just a normal big pen that you can get, you know, 25 in a box for a buck or whatever. And I say I got it for $25, $25 is a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But if I also flip that around and say for $25, 
you get to be in a room, like not only, so I'll be there, right? So, you know, you guys know I usually bring it and then, uh, you know, I give a lot of free game. So some of you just come for that, but now you get to be a part of one, some of my peers and then my mentor to be able to learn stuff he's doing. Talking about 25, he charges 25, like people pay 25 pages just like to be around him, right? That's mm -hmm. like, I think it's like, it's one of his low end things, right? And then it's got people paying 65, $70,000 to be in his sphere of influence. Right. And you may and I know that's a lot. I'm not saying everybody need to go out and do that. But the point is, you spend a twenty five dollars to spend with spend time. You get a couple hours with someone who is doing those type of things. And all night, yeah. he's not only just the person that's, oh, I'm selling this. Come join me and get the value, et cetera. You know, he, he do the same thing, the same thing that I talked about it with Dean earlier. The same thing that I tell people to do. He does. Yeah. It, right. So he got a couple of one mastermind. I think it's like a couple hundred grand a year. I don't know how much Grant Cardone stuff is in, but you know, he's expensive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but his stuff is like, I mean, he got $4 billion in real estate. Yeah. The other guy turned down a billion dollars for his company, turned it down. And that's wow. when you get partnered. That's when you get, that's when you get mentored by. That's his mentor, right? right? So he pays for that accordingly and he trickles down that value. And I get, yeah. you know, his interpretation of that and he's able to provide that value. And the point is, it's all about networking, man. It's all about relationships. So, I mean, when I talked to Dean earlier, when we talked earlier, I didn't know this, but Dean was like 25 bucks. I'm like, dude, that's probably way. Like I told Dean, he's probably, shout out to Dean Three Properties. He's probably, he's probably paying for people to come. Cause yeah. that, like, I don't even know, if, I don't know what, so, and I'm, not, and I'm saying that's a good thing. It's almost a charitable event, if you ask me, right? But yeah. the thing is, if you're thinking about real estate, oh, I want to get into it. I've been in it, but I don't know how to grow, or I would just like to do bigger business. It don't matter if you get started, or if you're doing five, 10 deals a month, or you think you got, you want to grow your company, or you already got it. Like, there'll be value there, just because of the, the sphere of people who will be who would be there? Bill Allen being one of them, myself being mm -hmm. there, other people who are also in that same mentor, uh, mastermind will all be around as well. So that's probably the best answer. Oh, Phil, how did you, especially people all the young age, man, you guys are young, well, how did you, look, I'm, I'm not, I did what they told me not to do in school, right? In school, they told you don't mm -hmm. copy off people, you fail, right? I'm cheap. That's right. cheap, right? But when I get in line of business, that is the best, actually the right answer. That's actually the best way to do it, is to get around the people and they give you the game. Here it is, yeah. do this. Don't figure it out for yourself. Just cut yourself, save yourself some time. And that's the biggest thing that these things do is they buy, you're literally buying time. In this case, you're buying significantly more time for 25 bucks, but uh, but you're buying, you're buying speed is what it is, right? As opposed to you having to figure it out. That's one of the principles to success. Every time somebody asks me, I say the first thing is get a mentor, right? Or a mentorship or that principle in a case. It doesn't have to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on something. I'm not saying that. A book, the author can be mm -hmm. your mentor, right? Especially if they no longer here. That's that's yep. mentorship because you learn them from their life experiences. It took them 30 years to gain these experiences. You get to read that book in two days, three days a week. And now you have the experience. You just bought time. You just bought speed. You got courses that do the same thing. And then you got these coaches and the group calls and things like that. It's all the same thing. So that way you, that way your achievements are not only equal to what you know. It's not only limited to what yes. you know. You know what I mean? One, I mean, it's, you, you, some of these times you're in groups and you talk to people and they say one little thing like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Boom, I already made so much money off of this one thing. You know, just because yeah. you know, and the last thing I'm gonna say before I go too much on a tangent, and I talked about this earlier, is just think about how you talk. So it's not like, for somebody that this concept may be new to, it's not like we're telling, I'm not telling you something I don't do myself, and I'm not saying something that doesn't make sense. You can ask yourself, just look at the laws of nature, look how nature works. Think about yourself when you were born and you didn't know how to talk. Now, yes, if you, it's, I mean, so I'll put it this way. You just one day started talking you're around your parents. Maybe they told you, say, mama, daddy, hello, and all this other stuff. But one day mm -hmm. you were just fluent and talking, right? You got up and you started talking. It wasn't a very, like a school, like here, I'm teaching you yes. how to speak and things. It wasn't that. It's just one day you just, but how did that happen? Because you were around people who are doing it all the time. So one day you're like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm just going to do it too. That's what happens in business. Literally what happens in business, you start learning from osmosis just from the, just from being around the right people. So now if you can combine that with the intention of intentionally being around the right people, making yourself being around the right people, that's one. And then also intentionally learning about the thing that you want to do. 
all of a sudden success becomes a byproduct of you being who you are or you having the habits and the mindset and the level of thinking that you have right yeah. you know, somebody that's making a, like doing significantly let's say where someone where no matter where someone might be somebody that's doing significantly more than you it's not always a like and it's easy for them they're not thinking about it like it's difficult they're right. thinking about it like it's easy and that's because they've done it time and time again and maybe they have a different level of understanding that allows them to do it easily so when you get around that you you pick up that same energy and you take bits and pieces of it and apply so point is i know i went off on that but point is uh was it march 8th i think six to eight six yeah. to nine with myself bill allen dean will be there we got a couple other high level companies that'll be there yeah if you in real estate thinking about being in real estate i mean that's basically where you want to be 25 dollars for a ticket i mean dude that's like literally we should all be thanking dean for that because uh 100 yeah because like bill like i mean bill is somebody that will tell you no very bluntly like to, mm -hmm. i've never had him come here you know what i mean and i can yep. I got a number i can call him up text him but if you call him text, <laughs> you know what i mean so if you but if you matter of fact he doesn't even keep his phone at this point you got somebody else manage his phone and basically <laughs> if, if she won't he won't see it if, if if it's not if it's not that so wait you get a lot of no's so for him to have him flying out he's flying out on his personal plane don't land yeah. in the state that's not like he'll shut you down but um point is i hope to see you there i think that you should come there that's not from a selfish perspective i'm not making money or anything from yeah. it but i don't think there's another wrong with making money i think dean's giving him away but uh yeah uh i think it's gonna be a lot of value to to, to uh obtain there uh i'm excited for it and uh hope to see you all there most definitely i'm gonna be there myself so i uh, you know see us there see both me and phil there i'm not gonna be speaking i'm just gonna be taking it all in that's what i'm doing i'm just gonna be taking it all in so i uh, you know it's it's kind of going through this whole process and my goal is to get around people that are more successful than me and that should be everyone's here's goal to get around people that are more successful more successful than you so that what happens when you're around people that are more successful than you? They bring you up. Now, yeah. it's not just writing the coattails. You still got to do the work and you still got to put in there and, and ask the right questions and things like that. But you surround yourself with, with higher end people, you're going to end up being higher end people. You're going to end up earning that type of money. You're going to end up doing that type of thing, doing those type of things. Um, you know, you, you are subject to the people that you keep. I, I'm a firm believer of that. So um, if you don't want, it, if you want to be earning more money, get around people who earn more money. Simple yep. as that, you know? And then try to emulate, do exactly what you just said. Do what colleges taught us not to do and mm -hmm. copy. Right, that's it. Good artist copy, great artist steal. I think it was Picasso said that. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate it. Remember, March 8th from 6 to 8 or 6 to 9, something like that, yep. in White Lake. We'll have the link down below in the description. Um, also, you, for any events that you can keep a lookout on Metro Detroit Off Market Real Estate Facebook group, I try to share them as much as possible. Uh, so these are not my events, but there are people that I know and they put them on. So I share them to the group to let everybody else know about them. So by all means, come check them out. I always join the group to, to see what new events are coming up uh, next as well. So I appreciate it, Phil. I appreciate you running through that deal with us. Yes, sir. Um, you know, what do you, what do you, uh, uh, what'd you end up picking? If you don't mind me asking, what do you, what'd you end up picking up that up for? I mean, it's probably record. I don't remember exactly. I think it's like 150 or something like that. I, it's, okay. it's like between 140 and 160. I mean, so we, we, we're going to do really yeah. well. It's probably worth like three. Um, okay. So I'm awesome. thinking that. But again, so our our, our 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 goals are different, right? So we're not just going to do yeah. that and try to make as much money as possible on it. Even though we could, we're going to keep it. We'll have equity in it and we'll um, uh, essentially uh, have a cash flow that that we that we want right so that's that's pretty much what that deal would be that's awesome well i appreciate you taking the time out phil um you know anytime you want to uh reach out to us my number's down here at the bottom uh you can reach out to me phil how can people get a hold of you if they want to 
uh, get a hold of you to talk shop or, or do anything like that? Well, first thing, hit me up. I mean, Facebook is good, right? Uh, Facebook yep. is good. But send me a message, message there. But um, uh, but just sometimes I miss it because I get a bunch of them. So I, I try mm -hmm. to be more cognizant, cognizant, monitoring those. But send me a message at me there. Uh, you can actually get me on Instagram too. I'll be doing more there as well. Uh, LinkedIn and all that stuff. I'll get some links and uh, stuff for you to be able to share. But the point is, if you want to reach out to me, Facebook is generally best. If you want to send me deals as well, uh, let's let's okay. uh, work something out there. Always happy to buy deals, whether it's you know commercial apartment buildings, if it's a vacant mm -hmm. restaurant, fast food restaurant, definitely looking at those. Or if you got your wholesale deals, residential, we'll look at those as well for sure. So I'm always uh, looking forward to that. And uh, yeah, and I guess worst case scenario, if you, you can't reach out to me, just hit up Randy and uh, we'll, he'll make sure we get in touch. <laughs> Most definitely. So I'm always open to JVing with other people and, you know, go, go straight from there. All right. Um, so we're going to have this. Remember, March 8th, go to the event. If this is, if you're seeing this after March 8th, keep a lookout for more events coming. All right. All right. You guys have a good one. We're going to stop this recording. Peace.